you. Thank, thank you very much. Well, it's a great, uh, great pleasure to be here today uh, and to see all of you here at CPAC at the beginning of a critical election cycle. You know, I said in 2008 and still believe that Barack Obama was not and is not qualified to be president of the United States on national security grounds. And we, and we have two more years of peril to go, two very dangerous years. This is why national security issues must be at the center of the 2016 presidential debate. We must have a robust debate among the various Republican candidates for the nomination. And I fully expect to play a role in that debate, one way or another. But of necessity, we must look past the Republican nomination process to prepare for the 2016 general election. The conventional wisdom is depressingly clear that Hillary Clinton will be the Democratic nominee. Now let me just say, Hillary and her husband were a year ahead of me in law school. I have been burdened with them 20 years longer, <laughs> 20 years longer than the rest of the country. I feel that I have a civic obligation to help escort them to the exit door of American politics. So, so in short, I am ready for Hillary. Now, she will run on the basis of her record as Secretary of State, hard as that is to believe. So let me say it clearly. Her four years at the State Department demonstrate that she is not fit to be President of the United States. And if it's not Hillary, the alternatives are hardly better. Joe Biden, John Kerry, Elizabeth Warren. Here's the key point. On national security issues, Hillary's record is indistinguishable from Barack Obama's. Let's consider the evidence. On international terrorism, she supported Obama's withdrawal of American forces from Iraq in 2011. That is the single most significant decision to explain the chaos in the Middle East, the rise of ISIS, the creation of a new state out of what used to be Syria uh, and Iraq. That was her policy, not just Barack Obama's. She is responsible for the State Department's consistent mishandling of the Arab Spring, misunderstanding that this was not a new flowering of democracy, but the onset of a new wave of international terrorism, the fruits of which we're seeing right now. She, she failed to see that ISIS would rise not only in Iraq and Syria, uh, but also in Libya, where they've just beheaded 21 Coptic Christians. She advocated the overthrow of Muammar Gaddafi. She leaked it to the press. It was, it was published everywhere. And then she failed to follow up. Gaddafi was overthrown, and chaos descended across Libya. She is the one who has said that America must devote more attention to Africa, and yet Boko Haram is now sweeping across the African continent, killing thousands of people and enslaving many others. She is the one who said recently, even after leaving the State Department, that the swap of Bowie Bergdahl for five Al-Qaeda terrorists at Gitmo was a positive step. She said in a public interview about those five terrorists, she said, oh, those five guys. Oh, oh they're no threat to us, those five guys. Well, uh, Mrs. Clinton, I beg to differ. Uh, and and let, let's not ever forget Benghazi. Now, now that, may be, that may be what Hillary would like, but let's just examine it one more time. She says in her memoir, which I have read every painful page of, 
and I don't recommend it. She says in the memoir that it was the fog of war, that things were confused, that they didn't know what had happened. But she knew quickly enough to blame the famous Mohammed video. And she stuck with that story uh, despite contrary evidence that emerged uh, as the attack was going on. She is the one who so callously testified in the United States Senate. She said, what difference at this point does it make what the cause of that attack is? That is the demonstration of her fundamental inability to understand what's at stake in the war on terrorism. She She left her desk at the State Department the evening while the attack was still underway in Benghazi, when American embassies and consulates all across North Africa and the Middle East were under threat. She left the State Department to go home. Now, I've worked for six different secretaries of state, very different people, different backgrounds, different personalities, different priorities. Not one of my bosses would have left the State Department where their people were still in trouble. During that entire evening and day, she never once called the Secretary of Defense, Leon Panetta. Every boss I had at the State Department would have been on that phone every 15 minutes. And the fundamental reality is she didn't prepare for the attack. She didn't anticipate it. She wasn't doing her job to protect Americans who are sent to dangerous posts overseas. We knew as far back as February 2011 that Libya had descended into chaos. We had to evacuate our personnel then. How? Through the United States Navy? No, we had to rent a Greek ferry boat to come to Tripoli to get the people out. And even after that lesson, we didn't take adequate steps to protect against what happened on September the 11th. Our people were left to die in a terrorist attack, and we had no way of getting to rescue them. And there was no effort on that day to worry about what other steps might be taken. But even worse, under her tenure, in the time since September the 11th, 2012, the entire administration response has been to arrest one person to bring them to the United States for a full due process criminal trial. No retribution, no retaliation. The terrorists and their state sponsors around the world have learned that under Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, you can kill an American ambassador and do it with impunity. That's Hillary Clinton's lesson. She has pursued a policy in the Middle East against our staunchest ally, Israel, as if it's an adversary, thinking that it's Israel's actions that are the cause of uh, peace and the threats to peace and insecurity in the Middle East. It was with Russia, it was Hillary Clinton's reset button that wasn't even translated correctly when she gave it to the, to the Russian foreign minister. She is the one who advocated collapsing our national missile defense program just at the point we will need it to protect ourselves against North Korean and Iranian ballistic missiles. She is the one who negotiated the New START arms control agreement that has allowed Russia to rebuild its nuclear capacity as ours has been drawn out. Under her watch, Russia committed massive unanswered violations of the INF Treaty uh, while we stood by. She is the one who allowed Ukraine to remain vulnerable and allowed Vladimir Putin to use military force on the continent of Europe to change international boundaries, something that we said in 1945 we would never allow to happen again. And what's next? What awaits President Clinton? The Baltics? What other NATO members are we going to see uh, in threat? In the Far East, she faced China with making massive uh, territorial claims in the East and South China Sea, and her policy in response was to call for a peaceful negotiation of disputed territorial claims. Tell that to the Philippines and Vietnam when they see China building installations in the South China Sea. Hillary Clinton has negotiated 
treaties that threaten American sovereignty, the UN Arms Trade Treaty, which is a backhand way of getting around the Second Amendment. She has said she wants to sign the International Criminal Court Treaty, which is a dagger aimed at the heart of America's defense capability. And the deal with Iran, the nuclear deal that Barack Obama is about to sign, those negotiations were launched while she was Secretary of State. This deal will be the biggest act of American appeasement in contemporary history. It will enable uh, Iran to move to nuclear weapons capabilities at a time of their choosing. It will legitimize this terrorist regime, which has been the largest financer of international terrorism for the last 35 years. All of this occurred under Hillary's watch. And then we come to issues like North Korea and its nuclear weapons program, which is basically a memory lapse uh, under Hillary Clinton. I come back to the central point. With that record, and being the third Obama term, it has to be the case that national security is at the core of the 2016 presidential campaign. <laughs> The conventional wisdom that the American people do not care about foreign policy is wrong. The American people are ahead of their leaders in Washington on that point. They want a president who will defend the country. We, we made a grave mistake in 2008 and 2012 by electing someone who was unqualified and unwilling to do what was necessary to protect our country from foreign threats. We cannot afford to make that mistake a third time in a row. The people in this room can and must make that difference in November of 2016. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.